This is going to be a brand new series here on Dragon Army. Uh, I'm going to do it regularly, not necessarily every single month, uh, but when there are five books that are newish that I think you might be interested in picking up and reading in the, generally it'll be in the sci-fi fantasy category, then I want to bring them to you quickly so that you can know about them and you can get them on your radar, put them on your TBR to be read list, or maybe just pick them up on their release date. This is the first video in this new series. All right, just to be clear from the start, I haven't necessarily read all of these books. There are books that just came across my radar and now I'm sharing them with you. The first one is a book that came out July 14th, so it's already out. It's called Peace Talks by Jim Butcher. This is, of course, a part of the Dresden Files series, and uh, it has been, I believe, five years since the last release, last entry in the series. So fans of the Dresden Files have been looking forward to a new entry, and they are getting two of them. They're getting this one, Peace Talks, and they're getting another one here in just a short amount of time. Now, here's the thing. I believe that this is the 16th book in the series. So if you want to get the full backstory, you might have a lot of reading to do before you get to this one. However, to some degree, each of these books are standalone adventures. If you don't know anything about this series, it is contemporary urban fantasy set in some kind of supernatural Chicago where this wizard detective, it's what he is, a wizard detective, Harry Dresden, uh, receives cold calls about uh, like mystical cases that are going on in and around Chicago that he goes and investigates. Usually there's some kind of supernatural force involved and he gets involved in taking out or eliminating or stopping whatever that evil magical force is. You might want to read Peace Talks if you like a main character that is witty, uh, that the reading is fast paced and uh, that is like a supernatural realism type situation. Peace Talks might be for you. The second book is Savage Legion by Matt Wallace. Uh, this is the first book in a brand new series, came out July 21st and it is an epic fantasy. That means it's dense, not only in length, but in uh, context and world building. We've got three POVs actually in this story and they're all in different spheres and avenues of the world and of the, the life and the environment. But by the end, their stories have of course intertwined with one another. What's cool here is that each of the characters are in their own lanes. And so you've got one character that is kind of in this military fantasy, which a lot of us fantasy readers would be familiar with. You've got a second that is dealing with the urban social life, like the upper crust type stuff. And then you've got a third that is this clever paraplegic that has been taken from the streets to work behind the scenes for a shadowy organization, a group of people that are not all that bad. You might want to read Savage Talks if you're into epic fantasy. Uh, this is one of those that's layered, that has a lot going on, and that it's easy to get lost or confused by, by the world building. And so if you're one that like needs everything answered by 25% of the book read, you might not enjoy this. But if you're one that's in it for the long haul and you're in it for the payoff, then by the time you get to the end, you'll, you might really enjoy this book. Our third book came out August 4th and it is Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. And this is a sequel, a follow-up to a book that released just last September called Gideon the Ninth. And get this, it is sci-fi galactic necromancy. This is uncommon fantasy. This is uncommon sci-fi, blending those together. And, and that's exciting, that's fun, because we get a lot of the same, right? This is something completely different. From what I've seen, both books kind of have a polarizing response. You've got people on a very low end and you've got people on a very high end. I know that in the second book, the pacing and the style changed up a little bit. So, man, the author is even like being more experimental with this second book than even the first. And, and the premise even by itself sounds completely experimental. 
Harrow is the last necromancer of the ninth house, and she's been drafted by her emperor into an unwinnable war. Uh, the, the description says this, that it is mind twisting puzzle box of mystery, murder, magic, and mayhem. And you know, you know, when there are that many alliterations that it's gonna be a good book. You might want to read Harrow the Ninth if you are in the market for fantasy sci-fi that is different than everything else on the market right now. Because this most certainly fits, fits the bill, fits the bill, both of those, not only in the, the way that it's uh, like, that it's a necromancer in space, but that it the, the pacing and the writing and the tactics that the author took in this book is vastly different than what a lot of people are doing. Book number four is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. This isn't out uh, while I'm recording this. It's not yet September 15th, which is the release date of this book. If that name of the author sounds familiar to you, it's because you probably read Aragon or one of the other dragon, the, the Inheritance Cycle books uh, that came out years ago. Christopher actually is in the Guinness Book of World Records because he started writing or became best selling at a very young age. I believe that he started writing The Inheritance cycle when he was 15 didn't publish it then but uh man it's it's multiple books about dragons a lot of people liked it um and now years later he's taken a brief hiatus he's coming back with this massive beefy 880 page tome of epic sci-fi who would have thought that this is the direction that christopher was going but I'm here for it and I know a lot of other people are as well. It is an epic sci-fi about a woman named Kira in a future space setting and as she's exploring various planets and doing her job and her duty, uh, she initiates first contact. And first contact doesn't always go the way that you hope that it would and it most certainly doesn't here. And she's launched into a galaxy spanning odyssey of discovery and transformation. It is a very plot driven story from what I am reading of early reviewers. Uh, the characters are not what you need to be here for, but when it comes to epic sci-fi, it's not always characters that you're there for in the first place. And our author here, Christopher, t gives us 880 pages worth of that. So it, it, this might be a story that you're interested in if you're here for the long haul. And if you're looking for a new epic sci-fi that's just starting to get here on the, like on the cutting room floor, then this book might be for you. And then book number five, I intentionally saved this for the end because it is unlike the rest. This is the book of dragons by literally everyone. Figuratively, everyone. Garth Nix, Scott Lynch, R.F. Kwong, Kate Elliott, and many other team up to give us this incredible uh, anthology of the mythical beast that all of us have known and loved since we were children, the dragon. This anthology came out July 7th, so it's already out you, on the shelves. You can get it. Shelves. Are people still going to bookstores? And every entry in here is never before seen works written exclusively for this fantasy anthology. There's nearly 30 stories in here, poems, songs, different, different things that all speak to and talk about dragons from various cultures, from various worlds, of various mythologies. It's spanning the gamut. So listen, there are going to be some stories and poems in here that don't reach out to you and move you, but then there are going to be others, especially from what I'm gathering, the latter half that are epic, amazing. You might want to pick up and read the Book of Dragons if you like dragons. If dragons are your thing, then this book might be for you. This new series is going to be where you come in in a major way because I need you to let me know in the comments what books are coming up in the coming months in the sci-fi fantasy category that you are excited about so that I can have a new video with five new books to let everyone else know about. So if there are any books on your radar, please let me know down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching this video, for clicking like, and if you haven't yet, click subscribe and join the Dragon Army, and we'll see you in the next video.